joining me today on the Uniweb interview show, oh, the witch, author, author. of the Wow, my voice just recuperated like crazy. Hello, witch. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> Very good. Yeah. How are you doing today? I've been busy. I've been busy. Staying busy. So... Can I call you Witchy, or what? How? How should I? How should I refer to you? You can call the me witch. Ryan. You can call me Ryan. Call me Witch. Everyone calls me. Everyone just calls me Witch. Okay. okay Whatever witch. you're comfortable I with. Feel, I feel like just being like, "Hey, Witch." <laughs> Not People nice. do it. That's that's totally cool. Can I call you W? <laughs> Not if you want me to answer. Okay. Um, all right, Ryan. I'm gonna call you Ryan. Okay. I, I'm surprised every time, like, we, we did an interview a little while back on Instagram, mm -hmm. and the, your background always surprises me. Like, you're very, you're very girly, mm -hmm. which, yeah. which surprises me because your persona online is not that of, like, a girly girl, if you will. It's very dark. It is very dark. And mm -hmm. I see all the pink and stuff behind you, and it's a little it's frightening. Well, I can personal. still like pretty things, pretty glittery things. You can. I'll mm. allow it. I mean, I'm just, I'm okay. just curious. <laughs> I'm just curious as to the persona of the witch, the the feeling of the witch, and the reality of Ryan. Where does where does the line blur for you? For everyone, because I feel like you have a huge following on social media, so everyone knows you as the witch. Mm -hmm. Where does the line blur for you? Um, I have a big problem with um, the people around me. It's sort of, you know, everyone knows me as Ryan or a mom because I have kids. And mm -hmm. um, I have a problem. Um, it's like a job, you know, you know, during the day I, I write, I edit, I work on my social media platforms, you know, you do everything online and then I treat it like a business. So then when I'm done for the day, whatever time that is, I have a hard time pulling the witch back because I have to go back into this other role of, you know, my everyday life. When in reality, the witch is the true me. And Ryan is just sort of who I play on TV, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It does make sense. It, it, do you find it hard to, uh, to play the role of mom? And yeah, I do. It, feel, it feels unnatural for you? Well, it's always, and I know that it sounds, it, it has always felt you know, like I'm playing at it, even though I've got three great kids, I, I did everything I was supposed to with them. But it was it was like a little side job that I had to do. If that I know yeah. that sounds kind of callous, but the witch is truly who I am. But the people around me aren't as accepting of her as everybody out there is. And so I can sure. be myself. Everyone thinks it's a persona. And I, that's not like the true me. Actually, that is the true me, the witches. So I can be myself with you guys and out there. But when I'm when I'm with, you know, immediate family, I'm sort of playing this role. And I have to bite back something that I would normally say or how I would react because, you know, it. I mean, they just don't they don't get it. Well, it must feel nice to be able to be yourself in a public platform, though, like to be able to start coming back into who you feel like you are. Yeah. Like I know for me, like every time I would go out on job interviews or like have a, a corporate job and have like a suit and tie and stuff on, I would feel like somebody like somebody's dad playing a role. And I would I wouldn't feel like mad at all. I was like I, I feel like a, an eleven year old boy all the time. <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and it feels great to finally be able to be that eleven year old boy who thinks farts are hilarious uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the real world it's freeing right yes it is very freeing so when it comes to river uh your book is going to be out june 14th mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It, right june yeah. 14th river is out this has been in the making for quite some time yes i had the dream in 2000 10, I believe. And then I went to Mirror Woods by chance in 2012, but I actually didn't write River until June. I didn't sit down and start writing her until June 2014. Mirror, what is Mirror Woods? 
Um, it's a place in San Francisco. It's a park where the red, it's not the big redwood forest. It's a, it's another part of it, um, a redwood forest. And, um, since my story takes place, the ebb is the, the band is the first book takes place. They live in the trees. So I needed a forest where it was like, you know, not how it is here. You know, it's very hot here and you only get like one to two months a year that you can go hiking and really enjoy it. But I needed something that was nice all year round and Mirror Woods is like that. And I, but I had never been past Texas. And um, then just by chance, uh, my warrior had a work conference out in San Francisco. And I have an uncle and his partner that lives in Belmont, which is like 45 minutes away. And the first day I was there, they took me to Mirror Woods. And I just walked in to this park and I just, I broke out in goosebumps. I just, it was it. I knew it was the place. So you're gonna have to forgive my dog who's sitting there scratching at the door. Um, But I, I, I realized when I walked in, that's where they lived. And, but my exposure to it was only like an hour. So I had to come home and I had to do all this research for it. Um, But again, I, my life was busy being a mom and volunteering and, you know, I did all that bullshit. Um, So I didn't get a chance to just sit down and just solidly write her until June, 2014, 2014, yeah. Were you on like the PTA and stuff? Mm -hmm. I cannot imagine you. It's like doing bake offs and oh, stuff. Being miserable. Like oh my God. And I'm like the girl that, you know, because I'm not the traditional mom either. So yeah. I'm just sitting there and, you know, I don't really get along with, you know, other people. And so I'm always the one that stood out. And even holding back the witch like I did, you know, I was always different. And I'm totally okay with it. Yeah, I can, I can completely imagine you in a group of other moms like cheering for their children yeah it yeah. just seems weird <laughs> very weird it is very that weird. is so cool that you had a dream uh that became river which is now going to be a 10 book series mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and that the dream came to like full circle or full fruition once you made a trip to mirror woods where you had never been before but Mm -hmm. it was like the place in your dreams it's amazing how stuff like that happens right that's fate man that's fate happens to believe in fate i do absolutely fate and karma my second book is called fate oh yeah book two oh my oh yeah so is this the is this the like a series of things that have happened in your life they make you believe in fate and karma and um, I mean, I did bring in some of that stuff. I've always believed in fate and karma. I always believe what you put out in the world, you get back threefold. So, you know, if it's good, it's great. I, so. Bad, <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, what goes around comes around. How you treat people, treat people will be how you get treated. And I, that, that is a huge theme through the entire 10 book series. So. It's interesting. Is it? Is it, I, it is it is interesting. I, you know what else is interesting? You mentioned the warrior, and I've wanted to ask you about this. So, who is the warrior for people who don't know? Uh, he is the man that uh, owns me. <laughs> he owns you. Okay, um, that's an interesting way of putting it. Is <laughs> how how did he become the warrior? Um, Has he always been the warrior? Because I see I see some of the stuff you're writing now yeah. like your short short stuff and it's talks about the warrior a godly man broken by the witch and all this kind of stuff and i'm like who was this evangelical man <laughs> uh he <laughs> was a, a very innocent man yeah when yeah. when fate brought us together um and you know our our journey it's going to be 21 years this august that we've you know that he's owned me oh. so um our journey has been a very crazy one and he just slowly became the warrior um well he likes to work out he's very muscular very big man and he's just it's all he's always been like this warrior to me and the warriors in my series are based off of of him so you know and he's and he's my bastard's kids father you know the the kid's father you know the little shits that's their father i I think (laughs) i mean maybe not the youngest one because you know we drank a lot back then but I'm like 79% sure that that's his, that that's his stuff. But, you know, don't, don't quote me on that. Those are and good I tell acts. my kids that all the time. I tell that kid, you know, I'll tell my daughters, go ask your father. And then I'll tell my son, well, I, he might be your father. Go ask him. And they get so mad at me. He is too my father. I'm like, okay. <laughs> 
as long as he's cool with it, I guess it's fine. That's right. That's it's, right. It's 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 an interesting dynamic. I, I I just like try to put myself in the life of the witch, and I can't do it. <laughs> I just don't like trying. <laughs> you know? Do you know what I mean? Like trying to put yourself in somebody else's shoes and like understand where exactly where they're coming from. Like I I can understand some points of view and some things. It's just. It's a it's a uniquely amazing thing that there's so many people out there with different lifestyles and uh, views on things and the perception of the world that we but we can also connect on so many different levels, right? Yeah. Yes. As many ways as we're all different, we're all the same. Um, with with that, like River is young adults, right? Teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, reading some of what you've been talking about um, online and, and following the Haven and all that kind of stuff in the Facebook group, these these teenagers are you're trying to portray them in a, the most honest light possible. Yes, I do portray them the most honest, realistic way. I don't sugarcoat anything. How they right. talk, how they act. Um, that. You know, I had a really hard time selling River because of that, because young adult, the young adult genre is actually very old fashioned and rigid in the rules about what sells and what someone will accept. Um, yeah. And I see young adult nowadays as more middle grade because they don't want it to be realistic. I had four different agents at four different times um, from three of them from big agencies that told me teenagers don't actually talk like that. And I am always floored when they say I'm like where are you living because I want to fucking come live there because you know where I live this is how they I have actually sugarcoated actually River is the nicest of how a kid acts but she was you know technically she was born royalty so she always has that kind of you know smoothness in her but you know when it I bring in more characters and they're not as sweet as she is so yeah. I, I'm always surprised when agents like you know kids don't really talk like that and your your situations are too realistic and it's kind of dark and, you know, we don't really want to put that out there. I'm like, God forbid we actually talk about how a child or a teenager is actually living. I, I never yeah. get it. Well, and that, that's one of the things I wanted to ask. Like, how do you put yourself in, in the teenager's role? Like, how do you get yourself in that mindset? I mean, we're... Um, well, you know, I have I have three heathens. And 17, when I was 17, that was the most um, memorable year for me. I So many things happened, and I just, I remember vividly how that felt. My son is um, 17 right now. You know, when I wrote this, my daughter was um, like 15, but we were going through the journey together as, you know, I, I'm just around kids, and that's how they act and talk. My son wrestles, and so um the wrestling tournaments you're around for like eight to 12 15 fucking hours you're around other kids and families and that's how they talk and act so yeah. i just observe it i just watch it i take it all in and i find that i get along better with teenagers than i do actual adults because with an adult everyone's faking it but a teenager isn't going to do that they're not going to do it they're gonna be like okay that's stupid or you know an adult's like oh that's great but a teenager's gonna be like oh fuck no okay you know, I and I just I prefer the blunt honesty of a brat than an adult. Yeah, that's yeah. great. <laughs> Don't you remember being a teenager? Yeah, I was like, I was weird. I was like the sweetest kid. I didn't never go out. Um, I played football and worked out and went home. I didn't go to parties or anything. I I got into my craziness when I was like. After when I was like 25, okay, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like I know what you're talking about though, because growing up in Atlanta, like the kids from the age of from like third grade on were the meanest, nastiest, like cussing, like would rip you up each way, like constantly getting in fights after school. They just mean, nasty little shits, like you said, (laughs) just like. No, yeah. and, but I think I think people don't want the illusion broken that their little sweetheart is really a little asshole. They yeah. want <laughs> they want to. No, they want I, that to is to, I, that is the most perfect description. Um, you know, I always say that you can know you can really 
create a good relationship with your teenager, your child. You want to get close to them, listen to their music, have them sit down and play their music list. And it's always amusing to me. You know, they're always so surprised when their sweet little angel likes like death metal or something. But right. your teenager's right. music will tell you so much more about your kids than you will ever know. And, and I, I, I just, I don't understand why people want this illusion of. If this tells you anything about me in high school, I would, you know what I would listen to before football games? What? My playlist was Aladdin. I love it. Lion King and some Brian Adams. Wow. Wow. I was wow. like the sappiest tough guy you'd ever did see. <laughs> wow, man. I was like Guns N' Roses, ACDC, Aerosmith, Madonna. I mean, I was hardcore. I could never, I never got into Nirvana. I love Nirvana. It, it was always too depressing for me. Oh, I love depressing music. Yeah. Love it. Well, like, I like it now some, but I think, I think there's, there's all like you can play with different waves of emotion through listening to music. You can I, I I've gotten trapped in like waves of emotion through music. So you have to be careful with how you do it cuz I'm a very suggestible type. Yeah. Um but it, it is interesting that if if we just learn if we but none of us want to get to know or let me speak for myself. Like I don't I feel like I would want to know if my kids were being little little assholes. But I think it's it's like one less thing that we don't want to have to deal with. Like we just want to believe that they're they're doing fine, everything's okay. Because it's like we're it's we're all I think most people are already struggling with their own life mm-hmm. and like how much they hate themselves that they don't want to have to hate their kid too. <laughs> Truly. And it's easier that way. It's easier to just pretend it's all good. It's easier to let them stay on their phone. It's easier to let them game. It's easier just to do that and not deal with it. And I, I'm totally have, have been guilty of that. I mean, it's just easier. Yeah. But You've I'm not very books. open with my kids. I'm a, they can tell me anything. Um, I'm very open with my kids. Like I said, I'm not the traditional um, mom. I'm not like, I'm not your friend either, mom. That's not really my thing. Um, my daughter, my oldest daughter just turned 20 and we are just now starting to become friends. Like Samantha, you met her. Um, this this was not how her and I were when she lived at the house. I mean, yeah, she yeah. until she joined the army and moved out, I mean, we butted heads. She is even stronger than I am, personality-wise. So if you can imagine. So she had to go. And I'm also not that kid that, you know, that mom who lets their kids stay for a couple of years and figure life out. Oh, fuck no. You graduate. You got the summer to figure your shit out. If you haven't already, when those buses start coming back around in August to pick up the other kids, you're out. No ifs, ands, nice. or buts. We're done. I'm totally serious. We're done. Yeah. My daughter graduated high school and in May, and she was gone by July for boot camp. Done. Did you breastfeed your children? I did. How long did you breastfeed your children for? Probably like six weeks. I didn't like it. Gross. It hurts. See, I was breastfed for four years. Oh, my God. You're a mother. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I know people that do that. I know. I know people I know. that do that. Guess, it's, it's, the ner- it's like... <laughs> no, I have this image of your mother. No, it's not. I didn't. I swear. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm so big and goofy. Um, I don't even know what I was talking about. So I don't know why I asked you that. I think it was, I think I, I, I do know. It was like the nur- nurse, nurse, uh, nursing, nurse, nurturing, nurturing. Mm-hmm. nurturing yeah. Uh, but I like that style of like, get the hell out of here, go figure it out on your own. Because when you allow your child to do that, you let them see that they're they're perfectly capable. Yes, and uh, they have to figure it out because I'm not always going to be there to fix it. So yeah. they need yeah. like they have four years um, to make really good grades to get scholarships. You know, we got the Hope Scholarship. We got all those scholarships that are available to us for them to go to college. If they mm-hmm. keep a 4.0 through college, which is my rule, I'll buy you a car. You go to college. We'll figure it all out. If you bust your ass, I'll bust my ass to make sure you can get to A and B. Well, my oldest daughter wasn't into that. 
So she decided just to go to the military. Now the military actually works out really well for her because she is so aggressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same with my middle daughter, even though she could have gone to college, she um, was really good in school. And my son, you know, he's there for the social aspect and the wrestling, but you know, he just, he doesn't care. And he's yeah. going to the Marines. So I'm almost free. I'm almost free. <laughs> when, he, when he graduates, then the witch is out full time. Oh when God. he's out of the house, then I can go and be myself. Does the is the warrior like totally on board with the witch being full time? <laughs> <laughs> no. As you you've read my poetry, as my poetry, you know, that is um when I talk about the warrior, you know, that's like a private thing, you know, and so he kind of sees me as his witch. So it, he has a hard time with me being a witch for everybody it, yeah. he he struggles with that but i don't care that kid's gone i'm, I'm, she's, I'm she's coming out i'm coming out i gotta come out of the closet that's right come out of the room closet <laughs> would you i don't i don't see you as a witch that flies a broom no of course not i travel in style that's right. someone needs to drive my ass around yeah i'm a very, <laughs> I'm a very high maintenance witch very high maintenance. Yeah, you fly on a Swiffer. swiffer that's that's right. That's right. None of that swiffer, old sweeper, school. motherfucker. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, you got the fan. Um, so you've you're you finished edits for or you finished book one. It's done. It's completely right. Completely it's all done. done. I can't touch okay. her anymore. She's done. All right. So print copies are those? Um, I we. Talked about that, and um, maybe next week. Don't quote me on that because there's there's quite a few that are going out. So yeah. you're not the only one that's um, waiting for your copy. Okay, I was just curious. Um, so you're sim you're simply focused on fate book two, editing. It's all written. You're just editing. Have you also already written book three? Yes, but um, I haven't been in her since last summer. And when I first did River, um, she was in deep first. So the third book is in deep first. So I have to rewrite her. It's all there. All the events have happened, but I've got to change it from first person to third person. Uh. Oh, no, it's really good. I love that. No, I, it's she's like, well, she's like at 140. So it's going to take me a bit, but um i'm i'm so sick and tired of the editing for river to river now we're just i'm finished up these edits so i can send it to my publisher and then we'll start the actual editing of her but i'm eager to get into the third book it takes place at the cove on the beach i'm excited it's a whole different vibe that's exciting how many words do you write these, these books are pretty long they're like 400 plus pages right yeah well no i think it, i think the river is like I don't know. The paging's weird to me. It's like 279 or 300. I don't know. I, I write a lot. I, it's like a hundred plus right thousand. It's a hundred plus thousand words, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. How many words are you, are you putting in a day on a regular um, writing? Day? Writing wise, I can put in 10 very easily. Thousand yes. words? Um, oh, crap. But if I'm editing, I mean, I don't, you can't really count that. Um, cause it takes me a while to go through each chapter. Like this last sure, week sure. I've been in three chapters, the same three chapters, making sure that it's as emotional and deep and funny as it needs to be. Yeah. So I can move on to the very last part of the book. That blows my mind. 10,000 words in a day. Like I, I get pretty, I get pretty tapped at around 4,000. It's but again, I, I stay, this is my job. This is what I do. Yeah. So I have all day to do it. I know. I'm, I, I don't know what I do. I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> it's amazing though. And so when we were talking, you're talking about publishers uh, not really liking the um, the idea of the the adult children or the way the children, the teenagers act. I'm calling them children. The teenagers yeah. acted. What was it about Kai Knight Publishing? Um, they're 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 a little different than a traditional publisher. Um. They let me. They've got a lot of great talent, by the way. I mean. Oh yeah, they you, do. Alexander have. Thomas. Um, I know there's some other ones, but like. 
We've got a and lot. They're, fa- of- they're fairly new too, right? Like they've been around for about a year and a half or so. Or yeah, it, not even a full year yet. They're very new. Wanted to try something different, and they let my vision of river be what I want. I mean, I've had a hand in every single step of it, and they just yeah. let. Yeah. They don't tame. Try to tame the witch. They don't try to to hold me back. They don't do it. They let me be me. Yeah. What you mean. That's awesome. It, it is. It's, but seriously, like what I see from that publishing company, and you could probably attest to this better than me because I'm just looking at it from the outside, is they seem to have a pulse on people who are storytellers who like have got some good shit they're going to bring to the market. And it's going to be it's going to be exciting and different. Like I talking with Alexander too, like he's, he's incredible. His imagination and the things he's bringing to the table are incredible. Just like what you're doing. Um, so just from, just from talking to you two, like, I feel like Kai and I set up really well. They are. They are. How's your experience been with them though? In terms of the, like, I know you said that they've let you kind of do, do whatever, but in terms of like the editing, the, the marketing, um, Mm -hmm cover design working, all that kind of stuff we've been working with the marketing together now when now i wanted to go the traditional agent publish uh you know agency route but that just didn't work out for me because yeah. of the genre that i was trying to sell river in but i've been i mean we go discuss things together there they don't they make suggestions this is what i think we should do and then we go back and forth whereas and i've worked with agents before with river and they're like you need to do a b and c and there's no moving them, nothing. But with Kai and I, we sit down and we have meetings about suggestions. I argue my point, they argue their point, and then we find a medium ground. So, um, but the marketing, if you're gonna go for a publisher or you know, be an indie author or self-published, you're going, you need to bust your ass. I mean, I, I do something every single day to market River, whether it's just the smallest thing that you don't even think is something I'm doing for River, but it is. You have to bust your ass to market yourself. It's just um, how bad do you want it? You can put in as little as, as time as you want and just you just want people to have the book or you can go out and just take over the world. Yeah. You've, and you've already gotten some uh, some really good reviews for River. I have. I have. Very surprising. I mean, I, you know, you have her. I had her for so long. And so when other people are actually reading her and then doing a review, it's kind of like it's kind of like surreal. Like it's like yeah. it's fake yeah. or something, you know what I'm saying? Like I, like <laughs> like somebody's like, just messing with you. Yeah, like someone's just messing with me because I'm like, okay, okay. It it takes, you know, I'm not very big on celebrating milestones and stuff like that, so I don't do that. But it does make my heart skip a little when I read those. How many have you gotten back so far? You know, uh, six, seven, something like that. That's awesome. Six, seven. And. and I- the ones you've got, I, I've, the ones you've gotten back so far, like, is there, are there any that stick out in terms of, do, do you feel like people are getting the story, like the yes. way you meant it? Yes. DM uh, Shepard um, did my very first review and she totally got, and you can go on Goodreads, she totally understood exactly what I was trying to do with kids. I mean, totally. And you can go to ryanlesley.com and click on my Goodreads page and it'll take you to her review. Um, and then she decided to do, um, something she, um, lives in Alaska and there's a shelter, um, there for, um, runaway kids at risk t- teens, stuff like that. And she ordered river, a bunch of river copies to give them, um, to read. And we're going to do a round table and we're going to do, you know, FaceTime and stuff like that. Cause I want to wow. connect with our readers. and, um, someone else has done something similar to that, that I can't really talk about yet. But um, things like that are just just from her reading the book, which isn't her genre, preferred genre that she wanted to read, but she totally understood it. And she felt so moved by it that she ordered all these copies to take to this to do the shelter because she works with the director. And that was something I wasn't expecting. But that sort of opened up my eyes to, you know. I do want to connect with my readers, you know, about I'm, I'm thinking about shelters around here and kids aren't reading today. That's just it just boils down to kids aren't reading today. They're not, they don't have to, they have a book, they have a, I mean, a phone, they don't have to read. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. had, I have to write in a way that it keeps them going. And I, I had two or three uh, teen beta readers who said they couldn't put it down and they don't like to read. 
So that that's that to me is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Because with an adult fantasy, you can add pages and pages of world building. You know what I'm saying? And you get diehard followers. You can't do that with a with a kid. You can't. You have a very no. tiny little window. To I, and I think that gap is closing even with the adult readers. Um, that if you're not, and there's so much content that if you're not putting out something that's gripping immediately. Oh yeah. There's so much other stuff to read. People aren't going to waste their time. Yeah, that's you true. Know? Um, is this, is, is the story about these teenagers, like trying to save themselves from something? I mean, are they, well, um, trying to find themselves in a way? I I mean, it, it, River is in the outside human world and she thinks she's a human. She's been raised as a human for the last 12 years. Some Mm -hmm. big event happened. She taken the outside and she was suppressed so all her fairness you know her power and everything has been taken away from her so she just thinks that she's just like a weird teenager because she runs a lot um she has this restlessness that forces her to run she literally can't control it so she competes with the raiders of JROTC. you know she's mm. constantly running and she just thinks she's weird but then something happens um and she realizes that she's not a human and she gets taken to the ebb which is the fantasy world and you know, being a teenager out here, they're exposed to everything. I mean, kids yeah. today have everything. But she goes to a place where they don't even, the kids have, her kids her age have never held a phone. They've never been online. They've never watched TV. They don't even know what a movie is because they don't have any technology whatsoever. They, they just don't. So her, one of her battles is trying to relate to this new way of life when that's not, you know, she's, it's just very uncomfortable for her. They're, it's like preppers, you know, they live off the land and yeah. they take care of each other. And it's all about family. And, you know, just her having to milk a cow is quite hysterical <laughs> because she's like, what the fuck are we doing? So, I mean, it, I make it funny, but her trying to relate and understand why this other life even exists, because she prefers the yeah. human ways and they don't like any of the human ways and they don't they don't like any. They're kind of stagnant. So when she comes in, she brings all these human things and just opens up all the kids' minds to where they realize that, you know, they've been like sheep and been led wrong. And there's this whole world out there. So I, it's worldly against innocence. Wow. So she's breaking, the, she's tearing the veil open for him to see. Yep. Yep. But she Is has it- a, a bigger purpose that that slowly is is mentioned toward, you know, in River, you don't realize that it gets deeper until like halfway through the book and you start to think, well, wait a minute, you know, maybe there's more to this story that, you know, meets the eye. Maybe this isn't just some really cool coming of age story. She's got this whole other thing that she has to do. Um, You know, they kind of want her to be like the chosen one. And she's like, I'm not your fucking chosen one. You know, I'm good. So, but it's not just her. Everyone thinks that River is the main character. But there are six main characters. I mean, that's okay. ten books. So yeah. everybody gets their own story, but they all tie. To, they're all together, happening at the same time. It all happens within a year of each a year, one year. Um, yeah. Did you ever feel like when writing, like her, her going into the ebb and showing this these people that hey, there's a lot more out there. Did it ever make you feel like maybe she's messing up something good? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that comes up, that comes up, but she goes to a male dominated world. Um, and they're, it's, they're not old fashioned, but it's like, you know, the, the warriors of their world take care of everybody. And she comes in and she doesn't understand why there's no female warriors. Why there's, why everyone is like, oh, well, that's what they said we got to do. And she's like, no, it's not. You know, her girls, you know, they all, they, they mate for life. Um, they have one mate for life and they go to the, you know, fall festival and they get of age and they get like one. Lobster. Yeah. What is that? Uh, like wolves. I mean, penguins. I mean, so many animals of it. And I'm, okay. yeah. I think that's really cool. But River's like, I don't want one mate for, what are you talking about? I don't want to be with one person for the rest of my life. So all the, all the girl, the females are very accepting of this and she struggles with it. She's like, no, no, you just can't. She's like very feministic. She's very feministic, right? 
She's okay. like very, and she goes into this male dominant world and she shows them, she opens their minds up. And I, and she does worry that, you know, she's contaminating the life maybe, you know, yeah. when you bring something in and it's worked for centuries and you bring in something and suddenly it causes an echo. And yeah. how do you deal with the echo when they've been so long without all this stuff and she comes in how how do you how do you deal with the repercussions from that? Yeah, it's the price of progress, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I I can see where that would be like. Are we making progress in the right direction? Or are we making progress just to because this is what I believe? Um, but in terms of like human worth too, right? I mean, you you, you have to question: um, Is she doing it because there's an innate human worth there that's not being represented for the female population, right? Yes, but um, they're not human. So she, oh, even okay. with that, they're, they're a whole different species. There's three species. It's the fairs, um, the maids, and the witches. Okay. None of them are human, but the, they, there were three original species that mated with humans, and this is what these three things have become, but they're not okay. human. So their thought, you know, um, you know, they don't under, they don't know what feminist is. They have, they've never heard of it. They just want to take care of people and they're, the males are very dominant. They're not mean with it, but they've never heard of anything like that. They, they don't understand. She's just like, and they're all so big and she's just totally, you know, tearing into them. And they're like, um, Okay, so you know, <laughs> talking to her mate, like, dude, you better check her. And she's like, you're not checking. I mean, you know, it's just situations like that. And yeah. and I like the um, how she helps her girls have a voice when they've never had one. It's interesting. I I can't wait to read it. I mean, there's been so much buildup of it on social media. You're doing a great job of promoting it. Um, and you have so many people I know that are already in love with the story. So I can't imagine this not being a huge success for you. And I'm, I'm really excited for you. I'm excited too. Thank you. And I'm going to come to your book signing as soon as you have one and dress up as a witch. Oh my God. <laughs> Great. Yes. I'm dressed as a witch. Me and Sherry. You're, you're a character. In. I've made you a character in the Excuse third me? one. I've made you a character in the third one. You made me a character in the in your book? I did. Matt? You're a human. You're from the what outside. Do, what's my name? Matt. Oh, like I'm serious? <laughs> I mean, me? I might change it. I might change it for, you know, purposes, you know, so people don't think it. I mean, I, we might give you like a name that only you and I know about, but you're going to recognize your character. Well, it's too late. Like everybody's going to watch this. It's true. So I won't put Matt. It won't be the name. They'll just have to figure out who it is. Tell we'll, me we'll about him. I'll, tell me about him. What, no, what are his special? No. His, Everybody is in my book. Everybody's in my book one way or another. You just got to wait. Oh, my gosh. You're going to have to give me some kind of excerpt. Okay. Does he have special talents? <laughs> Do I have any special talents? What? I don't know. You tell me. What, what's your special talent? I don't what's know. Your... What did you write? <laughs> You tell me what your special talent is, and I'll add it in. I used to be able to touch my thumb to my forearm. I can. I'm still like double jointed. I, remember when like this used to be a special talent as a kid? Like, well, I can do this. <laughs> and, then, and then we grow up, and it's nothing. It's nothing. Stuff. Nobody's paying for this, Matt. <laughs> Dude, I can't do that. What the hell? It's a double joint. Look at it. My son is double jointed. He can like pull his fingers down like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's so gross. I can't do that. Anyway, this is this has definitely gone somewhere interesting. Um, has it? <clears throat> this has definitely gone somewhere interesting. You sound so. This has definitely gone somewhere interesting. Ryan, the witch Leslie. Uh, I I want to thank you so much for your time coming on the Uniweb interview show. It's it's been a pleasure getting to know you over these last few months. Um, I do want to ask if there's anything that you could tell the world and all of its all of its billions of people um, as something that you live by as a code. 
a rule, what would you leave them with? Um, that when you have a bad moment, bad day, bad event, rejection from a manuscript, whatever, it's okay to take a moment and cry about it, eat something sweet, then get your ass up, stop bitching, and get back to work. It's that simple. So stop hard. Bitching. So Stop hardcore. <laughs> no, I'm serious. There's no, I have no room for bullshit. I can, you can take a moment and cry and, oh my God, poor me. And, and I've had many of those moments and I always eat candy. So that always makes me feel better. But then I get my ass up and I get back to work. It's, and it's, if you can't do that, if you're so involved in yourself that you can't do something, then I'm going to smack you. I have no <laughs> patience for that. I need to get you like a, you and Dr. Phil should have, I mean, Dr. Phil already has his own show, but you should have your life lessons with the witch television show uh, because it's true. It, pro, process it, get over it. Let's get on with, get on with life. And sweet and sweet always makes it better. Always. You know, I had stopped eating sugar for a while uh, for mm-hmm. like two and a half weeks. And yesterday was a really rough day for me. And I wrote a poem and I, I didn't cry. I'm not much of a crier. But I did eat something sweet. And let me tell you what. I felt better. <laughs> and that makes me feel better. And life, and you know what? Life isn't so bad today. It's okay. Dude, life is too short to not eat sweets. I'm serious. I know. I just, I get to the point where I just, that's all I eat. I like, I'm. <laughs> that's all I eat. I know. You don't, ha- you don't have eat, a- dude, the warrior makes me eat dinner. I don't, I don't care about food. I'm just, I'm a sweet witch. I'm entirely made up of candy. That's right. <laughs> like the Hansel and Gretel witch. See, but like, you don't have the problem like I do. When I eat sweets, I'm super allergic to them and I swell up to like 300, 400 pounds. It's not, I've got to be careful. You don't look like you would swell up. You're very fit. I do. Like, I'm, I'm swollen right now. <laughs> Where look at are this. you swole? Are you swole or are you swole? My arm, look, my arm is as big as my head. <laughs> Dude, your arm is muscled. You're swole, but you're not swole. You should look at these. Oh, my God. Look at these breasts. <laughs> <laughs> Fix that. You don't like your man breasts? Fix them. Can you hear my puppy? Thanks. <laughs> I will edit this out. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful day. And uh, everyone, go to your website right. ryanlesley.com dot mm-hmm. for, for more about River and all things the witch. <laughs> Can you hear him? That's my puppy. Yeah. Part of it. <laughs> it's my pet. I have him tied up. Good. You maybe gag him next time. He is gagged. That's him making <laughs> around his gag. Okay, bye. <laughs>